If you're thinking about launching a new business in 2023, the question might have come up, do you get started with low ticket or high ticket? I'm gonna give you four things to consider to answer that question right now. Hey guys, John Woodford here. My wife and I have made over $5 million selling low ticket offers over the last five years. And so this advice might come a little counterintuitive to you, but I actually wanna give you four things to consider when you're thinking about starting low ticket first and what to do instead. All right, let's talk with number one. One of the issues we have with low ticket offers is that they are honestly difficult to validate. Let me explain why. To go as low ticket as possible, let's consider a free ebook. You put it out there, a few people download it. Does that validate the offer? Not necessarily, because the offer is not necessarily the initial action of downloading the ebook. It's actually one, consuming the ebook, meaning reading it, two, implementing what happened or what was inside that ebook, so taking action on it, and three, getting the promised result that was promised from the ebook itself. Now, if you're doing, let's say, a freebie doing that, you've got a bunch of problems there because number one, a lot of people will sign up for a free thing, but not very many people are actually gonna open the free thing, read the free thing, okay? So right off the bat, starting low ticket, you're gonna get a lot of people where you have the opportunity for false signals, people saying that they love it, but they never answer it. So right off the bat, with low ticket offers, you have a lot of false signals of people maybe signing up for the thing, but never taking taking any action. All right, let's take that a step further. Let's say you have information in the book that is great, but no one ever takes action on it. Are you gonna follow up individually with each person on a free item to try to get them, kind of push them along to take action? You can try, but if it's a $0 or like a $7 ebook, you're honestly not going to be chasing after people trying to take action on it. Not only that, but if the person downloaded it for free or paid, let's say $5 for it, they're going to attach a similar value to that thing. The more people pay, the more they pay attention to it, right? The more they take action. I literally have a neighbor a few doors down who paid $25,000 for a coach just to honestly like get him to do the thing. And I asked him, because I've never paid that much for coaching in my life. And I asked him like, what is he doing that's justifying his fee? And his answer was literally, well, because I paid him so much money, I have to do the work now. And so literally it was just the accountability aspect of having said goodbye to those dollars that's making the value of the coaching. So in low ticket, it's difficult to validate because it's not really worth following up for everybody on the freebie train to try to get them to take some action from it. Whereas on the higher ticket side, you can go straight into helping them have conversations. That can be part of the value proposition in your offer, helping them implement the thing. Because unless the implementation happens and the results come from what it is you are selling or offering or trying to solve for people, you won't have the confidence to scale that. And of course, you won't have the money to scale it either if it's not working. The reason number two to be cautious of the low ticket route in 2023 is frustration and burnout. And to illustrate this, I want to pull up the whiteboard real fast. All right, so we're here on the whiteboard and I think sometimes just these visuals are so helpful. So if we draw a little graph, I want to show you what it's going to take to get to, let's say, a $10,000 per month income goal. A lot of people have that goal to kind of make them financially independent from their job and being able to be self-sufficient. So let's call this number of people you need to sell and let's call this the price point of your offer. Okay, so let's make this kind of silly. If we have a $5 offer, how many people are we going to need to sell in order to make $10,000 per month? Yeah, that's right, it's gonna be 2,000 people. 2,000 people at $5 per person. We can draw a little area under the curve and that right there is $10,000 of income for the month. And guess what? Next month, you gotta find 2,000 more people to sell at $5, okay? So that's all right, that's true. Nothing we can do about that. But now let's flip it around if we go high ticket. So we'll call this low ticket. Let's call this high ticket. All right, now let's say, for example, you're gonna sell something for $1,000. How many people do you need to sell now to make the same $10,000? Well, you, of course, got it, 10 people. And so this curve here is the same exact area. It's the same exact income as the low ticket. Now, obviously, you have to be offering something different. If you're charging $1,000 versus five, there's a whole bunch of different expectations and uh, assumptions going in there, right? You're probably gonna be spending some of your time on that $1,000 offer. You might have to put up a guarantee and work with people and really want their success. And that means you have to really believe in the thing you're doing or be willing to learn along the way and learn on the job training, if you will. Now let's talk about the burnout situation for a second. Now on this line here, what can happen if somebody starts out and they're not really thinking necessarily like a business owner. They're more so getting a really 
awesome hobby that they love to do, they might go after the route of putting up some uh, eBooks on their website or on Etsy or someplace like that and try to rock and roll. And it's just important to keep those realistic expectations of, hey, what is your ultimate goal? If you're trying to make it a hobby that's just paying for the grocery bill, that's great and rock and roll and more power to you. If what you want it to be is maybe a lifestyle changing business where it makes enough for you to be happy and it does it on your terms, then you just have to think about where are you gonna get 2000 people to buy your lower ticket item? And we're gonna cover advertising in a second. It's just a bit more of a math the math ain't mathin' basically on this type of a situation, whereas it is reasonable to find 10 people who would be interested in a more valuable offer that you can make to them if that is what your goals are. All right, let's move on to reason number three, the best clients simply won't wait. And as a little story about this, I was shopping for solar panels for my house. I think we're gonna go solar, why not? Hey, save the planet. And the first guy would go through the entire spiel, start from the bottom and build it all the way up. And then the second guy would force me to sit through the entire pitch, the same thing. I was like, dude, I'm already there. I'm honestly just like, go straight to it. I'm ready to buy now. Like, give me the price, give me the quotes, let's rock and roll. But they forced me to go through their rigorous process. And by the end of it, I just felt disrespected. Like, I'm ready to buy, sell to me right now, go straight to the thing. And there are a subset of your market, a subset of your potential clients that are like that. They just are ready to go now. Now, let's take that and think about the ebook versus the higher ticket done for you offer and see how that can relate. All right, so to make this clear, let's go ahead and just draw a common pyramid that people use to look at their audience. They're gonna have their higher ticket people up here, very small portion of the audience. They're gonna have their $2 sign here and they're gonna have their $1 sign here. So let's say this is a $5 ebook, this is maybe a $300 course, and this is maybe a $1,000 service, okay? So that might be your offer stack. Now, what a lot of people do is they start right down here and they mainly do that so they can build their own confidence. And that is absolutely a valid reason to start in that place. I just personally find that the confidence comes from doing the work and from actually working with people and building your own confidence in yourself. And that's something that we all have to go through. So you can get confidence from selling a $5 ebook, but there can also be a confidence hit if like you keep selling the $5 ebook and you're not actually like making money to support your family. And also you can sell the thing, but not a ton of results are gonna come from people because they're not valuing the offer itself. So that's going to be what happens on the lower end. What most people do is they start here and they force people to buy in here. And then from there, they try to ascend them up to from their do-it-yourself book to a do-it-yourself course for maybe $300. And only the people that are in the course are even eligible to work with them intimately. And some people will justify that by saying, well, I only want people who are already indoctrinated, who already know my stuff to even be acceptable in my offer. And people justify that by saying, I only want people who have gone through my stuff and know what I do. So it makes my job easier when they come on for the one-on-one -on -one training. But let's consider who is likely your best customer. Your best customer likely is something like this. I have money. I do not have time. I really need to solve this problem. And I see you and I trust you through the content you're putting out there. And, and from your own experience, I see that I can trust you to solve my problem. I have money, take my money, solve my problem. Like that is an amazing customer, right? Now it might not be what you want because maybe you just never want to have a client or somebody you have to deal with. And that's fine as well. That this might not be the video for you, honestly. But if your goal is to really like make that change in the world, you have to be able to take the people who have that burning problem and solve that problem for them. And forcing them to read the book before they take the course and then to take the course before they can book a call and to book the call before they can like become a client. People who need their problem solved now don't want to go through that. And so the best way you can get started fast, especially in 2023, is allow people to Netflix binge. Like if they want to go straight to the top or like knock through the entire thing in one day or just go straight to the conclusion, let them do that. And starting it with the high ticket can really help accelerate that process and accelerate your results and your social proof. All right, and the fourth thing to consider about high ticket versus low ticket is it is much, much, much easier to scale high ticket offers through paid ads profitably. I have run a ton of ads, you know, millions of dollars in ads over our business lifetime. 
And it is very tricky and you have to be very good at targeting the right people and making the right offer if you're trying to get a free item to a $7 product, to a $47 product, to a $77 product. If you're trying to do all that and make it profitable, you're working on margin. You're working on a very thin, razor thin margin in some cases about being able to put that $1 in and get a dollar or dollar fifty out while building your list and doing all that. It's a fantastic strategy, don't get me wrong. It is absolutely doable and it works and it's still working for us to this day. We'll continue to work for a long time hopefully. That being said, if you're trying to get started and get your business off on the right foot, I don't want you to have to create seven different products just to give you the depth of a sales funnel so that you can put that dollar in and get the dollar out immediately. We have tons of products at this stage because we've been doing this for a long time. However, if you want to be able to get that business to achieve your income goals, the fastest shortcut is not to start low ticket, but to go and put yourself out there and start with a high ticket. It'll accelerate your results, it'll accelerate your client's results, it'll get you social proof faster, and it's honestly just more scalable. So if you want to see how to do that step by step and join me along the way, I do have a special offer for you. And no, it's not a thousand dollar course or anything like that. It is a free challenge. I'm currently going through building out a new brand and a new offer, and I'm doing it, recording it, putting it out there. The goal is to get my first high ticket paying customer within 21 days and we're already in the challenge. So go ahead and look at the link down below or simply go to challenge.unbeatabletech.com. Sign up for it completely free. You get in immediately. And I really hope this video was valuable for you. If you did get some value from this, please subscribe, like, do all the cool stuff and let me know down below. Are you in the low ticket camp or the high ticket camp? I would love to hear and I'd love to create more content for you. That's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.